What? Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down! No! no. Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6 Episode 1. We're going to be doing my review for the first episode of the season, so The Flash is finally back, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so without further ado, let's go right ahead and get into this video. So, first things first, we've got to talk about the Godspeed stuff, because that's how the episode started. And so Godspeed returns. So there's a scene, they're running through Central City, it's Barry versus the Flash. Barry comes on, Camilla's there. Camilla's like, who is this other speedster chasing Godspeed? And basically Cisco explains, oh, this is Godspeed. He is a villain that we fought before. And as you know, last season, none of Team Flash, apart from Nora, knew about Godspeed. So this is a new person, but they had been fighting different versions of Godspeed the past four months so they said this is the fourth version of Godspeed that they had fought and defeated and all the rest are locked up at Iron Heights and this new version of Godspeed is going to be ending up going there and so Cisco explains yes Godspeed this version of Godspeed is the same as that one we saw last season in that he got his powers in the same way or you know whoever is controlling these Godspeeds did and you know they used Velocity 9 or some other formula that is very similar to give them speed and so when Godspeed is actually captured by the Flash so he knocks him over pretty cool scene looks pretty cool and then he screams but makes a weird sort of mechanical sound and I was like huh, what the fuck is this like it was just so weird I was like huh but it made sense with the explanation, and I was like, ah, oh, okay, I get it, I get what they were going for, so it was pretty cool in the end, so he makes this weird sound, and they aren't able to function in the way that, you know, a normal human would, so they are sort of clones or, like, copies of Godspeed, so they aren't able to function in the same way that a human could do, so this is very interesting, and this leaves us with a lot of theories, so the big question is, someone seems to be sending these Godspeeds in. So there's been four versions that they talked about. Who is it? That is the big question and I love that they put this mystery in there because we need some mystery and I love it. And so who is sending these Godspeeds back? And we know it's someone from the future. I do believe they mentioned something along those lines. Definitely someone from the future. These Godspeeds are going to be coming back and they have been coming back from the future to wreak havoc it seems on the flash or to distract the flash i'm not sure the real reason why they've been sent back but anyway so this will play into the back half of the season that is my theory so i think with the idea of what they're setting up is there is someone or something or maybe a different version of godspeed in the future who is making these copies and sending them back in the past and obviously they are malfunctioning of sorts and they are not working in a way that you know a normal human would be and so maybe this is perfected by the end of the season maybe this is a version of Godspeed creating all these different versions of himself obviously this is not August Hart they've been searching for August Hart Cisco says and it's a different copy it's a different person under the mask when Barry unveils who it is it's just someone completely random and so keep this in mind in the comics Godspeed can be in more than one place at a time because he is that powerful so go read flash rebirth if you haven't read it because that is where you get to see godspeed and he can be august Hart at one point with barry at ccpd or somewhere and then he can be godspeed killing people in another location so i get the idea is this a new version of that is it the malfunctioning copies are copies of himself or is it that this is a copy in terms of, oh yeah, it is an actual clone, like a real person, rather than, you know, him just splitting himself off into different versions, because this Godspeed looks completely different. So I think more likely than not, it's going to be the idea of clones. However, I think it is possible that maybe Godspeed could split himself and, you know, put another face on and, I don't know, change his appearance a bit, so that wouldn't be too far-fetched. 
but Godspeed will surely return as they've set up this mystery and they didn't answer it in the episode. All they basically said was, oh, we've been fighting these versions of Godspeed. We know it's from the future. We know there's August Hart is the main name of the real person. And so they know they, they've got these four versions. They've defeated them and they all aren't sort of functioning in a normal human way. You know, you get that with the noises and everything like that obviously signifies that. They're all locked up right now. And so I believe we're going to get answers, you know, later in this half of the season or in the back half when we are introduced to that second villain who may be Godspeed, but I think more than likely than not is going to be Red Death, who has been teased in the past. Anyway, so let's move on from the Godspeed stuff. That was the stuff I really wanted to talk about because I have a lot of theories about that and that's very exciting. But anyway, so Crisis on Infinite Earths begins. Nora's message glitches out at the start of the episode and it's left hanging till the end of the episode as to why that glitched out and why, you know, the power went down and, you know, the chip got screwed up and everything like that. And so by the end, it's revealed that the monitor has returned. You get to see him and it's awesome to see him. I was sort of getting chills when he came up. I was like, oh shit, you know, crisis is coming. And so you get the motive for why he actually destroyed the chip he's trying to take away all hope from barry obviously mainly barry but also iris and team flash and because they are trying to find a way to save barry and to stop this crisis and so next episode is going to be heavily to do with crisis barry's going to time travel we know that from the trailer also he's going to be going to earth 3 to meet our normal version of jay garrick he's going to see different alternate versions of the future and he's going to essentially see what's to come in Crisis or, you know, glimpses of it. And so, at the end of the episode, the final line is, Flash must die, as the monitor puts it. And so, he's trying to cement what is going to happen and, you know, really take away all that hope that they could potentially stop this. It's because it's rather inevitable. And so, it seems like with the monitor actually dropping the date of... December 10th 2019 with him going to die it seems like right now it's definitive but they're gonna find a way to change it I do believe and so this is actually the day that the Flash's episode in Crisis on Infinite Earths is going to debut on December 10th so it's sort of just tracking you you know put in a timeline essentially for when Barry's gonna die and when Crisis is gonna come so let's move on to talk about the next stuff more just to do with the episode as a whole we have Team Flash, they're introduced again, it's been four months, there's a time gap, and they're having a barbecue, it's, they're having a nice time and everything like that, and then we get reintroduced to Ralph as Ralph returns, and Ralph wasn't at that barbecue because he was away on this case, talking about Sue Dearborn, aka Sue Dibney in the comics, so he's been working on that case over the summer, and that's going to come to fruition very, very soon. Also, we get introduced to the main villain for the first half of the season, that being Ramsey, as he becomes Bloodwork. And so, there's lots of links to Caitlyn's past. Obviously, it's really convenient that his mum is, you know, the reason why she's at Star Lab. And there's lots of backstory and sort of exposition of what happened in the past, and we've never found out about any of this. So, it's just, you know, creating backstory, creating a link between Ramsey and Caitlyn, which should make it more impactful when he goes full on Bloodwork. And so, Caitlin goes to his mum's funeral, Bloodwork is introduced to us in that scene and you know they go out for a coffee and he's essentially trying to get Black Matter from Star Labs to you know try and perfect a cure for cancer because his mum was too afraid and he's not afraid and he reveals by the end of the episode that he's on track to getting cancer himself and so he injects himself with this device that he got earlier in the episode and it's full of Black Matter essentially and that's when he manifests and becomes blood work. You can see the sort of mutation around his arm and how it shoots out. That is very, very comic book-like. So, looking forward to him. I was pretty satisfied with the scenes with him. I don't think the actor did anything too special. He was just alright, in my opinion. So, kind of looking forward to that, especially when he turns full on blood work when he's using his powers and stuff. But anyway, so, a big part of the episode is done tackling this black hole situation as it appears at a rubbish tip or as you Americans say a junkyard and then CC jitters the black hole nearly rips up and takes Caitlyn 
and so it's revealed later in the episode that the cause of this was Chester P. Runk. He is a streamer of sorts. They made this weird streaming platform that is obviously made for the TV show, you know, because they didn't want to copy like YouTube or Twitch or anything like that. So he's this quirky guy, kind of funny. I found him very funny in the episode. And so by the end of the episode, he's put in the mental augmentation chamber, which they talked about at the start of the episode, a new device that will allow Barry to see potential timelines and it's going to help with crisis and things like that essentially and so that's where Chester is put and he is reconnected to his consciousness in his body so he sends out all these black holes you know not on purpose just to places that are familiar to him and we get this amazing scene with the Flash Gordon theme tune by Queen with the Flash aha uh -huh. it's so good I love that it was just perfectly played. Cisco talks and he's like, I've been waiting to use this song for such a long time. He plays a song and it perfectly goes along with Barry going into the black hole. You know, it creates some tension when Barry doesn't pop out for a while. And then when he pops out, it does the flash. Aha. Uh -huh, and it's so good. I loved it. That was one of my favorite bits of the episode. And although obviously the CGI is not so good, like it's all right. It's pretty CW standard. It's just a cool scene, like it really works. And so, moving back, so Killer Frost works out lots of stuff with Caitlyn. So there's going to be way more Killer Frost this season than normal. Essentially, what Episode One is trying to get out of it. So we get this new Killer Frost suit. It looks really good. Like I really like it. And so that was the suit that Cisco made for her at the end of the season. Also, we get a new Flash suit, which is wired with Nora's gauntlet from the future so that was the reason why he was able to create and you know take all that energy and put you know the black hole energy or whatever it was I kind of forgot what it was but the power that you know has taken over Chester back into his body and his eyes sort of glow up so he's able to do that because of Nora's future gauntlets and so the new flash suit looks pretty good like, I'm not the biggest fan of it, like, everyone's like, oh, this is the best suit ever made. It's definitely not the best suit ever made, but it's a big improvement on last season, so I'm just happy about that, to be honest. And so, we get Barry returning Nora's jacket, Nora's superhero suit, and it's a nice symbol of Nora's presence, as her presence was really felt in this episode. She was mentioned many times, and her now her suit is back in place of the Reverse Flash's suit which I think is very fitting and quite poetic in a sort of weird way and so you get the message obviously glitching out as well so there's lots of Nora references and it's about Barry and Iris getting over everything and working together and so they have some great touching moments throughout the episode I really really liked what they did with Barry and Iris this episode Iris felt so needed she felt like she was actually doing a lot of stuff that linked to everything and had emotion, had impact, and especially, you know, the stuff with Barry, but also the stuff to do with Nora. Like, Candace did a really good job this episode, I was really impressed. So, that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed my first episode review of the season. We're going to be here every single week doing reviews. They go up about the same time every day when The Flash actually airs. So, these reviews go up about 5pm to 6pm in the UK time the next day. Also, I have my trailer breakdown out tonight, so please be sure to be on the lookout for that. So I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.